23 tips and tricks to help you improve on Rampart in Season 13. To gather these tips, we played Rampart for over 20 hours to achieve 500 kills. I challenged myself to get 500 kills on every single legend in Season 13 to create better guides for you guys. In Rampart mains, if I miss any tips, make sure to comment them down below. And if you're not a Rampart main, comment down below what legend you're most excited to see me get 500 kills on. As a general rule, don't view Rampart as a pure defensive legend. Instead, use her abilities to control the speed of the fight. On top of that, your walls don't replace proper cover. Make sure you're always playing around cover that you can resort back to if the walls go wrong or if you run out of walls. Do not try to push teams out in the open simply with your walls to protect you. Her passive makes reloading 25% faster on LMGs, as well as giving a 15% boost to overall mag size. However, I feel like her passive is by far the weakest part of her kit and it shouldn't define your play style. At the end of the day, play with weapons that you feel most comfortable with. Because keep in mind, her amped walls add 20% damage to all weapons, not just LMGs. I know it's going to upset a lot of people, but I promise you, you do not have to use LMGs to get the most out of Rampart's kit. Now let's talk about our tactical. Rampart's amped wall is the only surefire way to get a single shot headshot. So if someone on your team has a Kraber, make sure you're always setting a wall up for them. With the recent buff, Rampart's wall is actually not half bad in close range 1v1s. While the deploy time buff was nice, the most important part was almost triple the health while it's going up. This means if you're in an intense 1v1 and you have just a moment, say your enemy goes into cover or starts reloading, throw down a wall right in between the two of you guys, giving you a huge advantage and forcing them to make a decision. You should constantly be using her walls to block doors. This is especially powerful in buildings that only have two doors. Say an enemy is holding a door and healing, if you don't have Sheila, block that door immediately run over to the other one and you're gonna have free shots on the enemy and they have nowhere to go as they won't be able to get through the door that you already blocked post buff the walls are actually a great way to get heals off in the open throw down your wall it's gonna have a lot more health than it did before immediately start popping your heal the key is when you're behind the wall look downwards that way if this top part gets broken they still can't see your head this is also extremely useful for if you're trying to get a res out in the open however if you're trying to res behind the wall i would highly recommend putting a second one as it will give you 800 total damage between the bomb two walls instead of just 400. if an enemy destroys the upper part of the shield don't hesitate to throw another one down behind it. This will give the second shield much more health to go up to where they can't destroy it when it's coming up. However, if the first shield's amped wall is not broken yet, the amp damage won't double up. In fact, if you shoot a bullet, it'll destroy the first wall. So if you do want to put more than one wall down, make sure you put them beside each other or slightly staggered. That way you aren't just wasting an amped wall. Never. I mean never. Be an amped wall hoarder. There's no sentimental value, so anytime you're done with a wall, make sure that you pick it up. This can easily be done with your character utility action. What I recommend is binding it to a button on your keyboard or your controller, it's really easy to access. For me, B worked best. Having on an easy to reach keybind is extremely important. Say there's an enemy on the wall, you block the door with your wall, and then you see that the enemy turns their back and they start to hesitate or run away. You immediately pick up your cover, go through the wall, and get free shots on their back. Her walls can be extremely loud when they're first going up. You can use this to bait your enemy. Throw your wall up and then immediately peek the opposite angle. The enemy is going to hear the wall and expect you to be sitting behind it, and you may get some free shots on their back. However, be careful when you're using this method, as you don't want the enemy taking your wall away from you and using it against you. If you ever find yourself on the wrong side of the wall, remember that you can simply hit that easy to hit keybind to immediately take it away from them. With the recent buffs, you'll never have to worry about an aid again. If you ever see a grenade indicator, just quickly put a wall down. With the new health of her shield, no grenade can one-shot it while it's going up. Just keep in mind, whatever damage that your wall takes while it's going up is actually deducted from the total health. A healthy wall has 400 damage, and as you can see here, with the damage taken from the nade, it only has 300. Not a huge deal, but keep this in mind if you do use it to block a grenade. Don't forget that you can super glide off the walls. On top of that, use your walls as a jump up boost to climb up to areas that were previously unreachable. This is specifically useful for World's Edge and Storm Point, where there's a lot of buildings that have windows that you can shoot through. One of my favorite uses for the wall is climbing up on it and creating unpredictable head glitches. Shout out to Sweet Dreams who showed us all that you can climb on top of her wall and create an insane head glitch in combination with a new castle. Play around with the placement of your walls. As you can see here, even the slice adjustment allows me to put out cover out in the open while I'm still in cover. This can be a huge tactic to take free shots on an enemy without them being able to return fire. The easiest way to put away Sheila is simply hitting swap weapon. However, before you pull out Sheila, make sure you swap your weapon. Because if you pull out Sheila while you have your fist out and then put away Sheila, your fist will come back out. This can put you in a tough situation during fight. So instead, if you have your weapon out and then pull Sheila out and then holster it, your weapon's gonna come back up immediately. If you're gonna swing a corner with Sheila, don't walk around the corner. You're gonna be too easy of a target. Instead, what you can do is start winding her up while you're sliding or bunny hopping as you turn the corner. This will make you a much harder target to hit. Sheila's recoil is actually extremely 
extremely easy to control. As you can see here, there's no side to side, specifically after the first 10 bullets. So as a general rule of thumb, prioritize holding the trigger down and quickly flicking to targets or pre-firing instead of letting on and off the trigger. Because once it reaches this point, it's the fastest killing weapon in the game. This easy recoil means never underestimate her from distance. On top of that, if you tap sprint, it actually has a built-in zoom. But what most people don't know is if it's the stationary Sheila, it's a three times zoom. But if it's mobile Sheila, it's only a two times zoom. If you feel like you struggle with the zoomed in Sheila, simply come to your per optic settings and then play with your two and your three times multiplier. I don't recommend upping them much, but upping them slightly can make it feel a lot more clean. As a general rule of thumb, every sight in the game from a two to a 10 times actually lowers the feel of your sensitivity by a greater amount the higher the sight is. For example, on mobile Sheila, her recoil is going to feel slightly more difficult to control on the two times zoomed in than it does the standard one times. Doors are one of your best friends, especially if you see an enemy starting to hold the door and heal. Don't hesitate to pull out Sheila and immediately mow through the door. Even if they back off the door, they're going to panic and you're going to get free shots on them. And if you do think they're going to get away, just quickly holster Sheila and then chase them down with your regular weapon. Most likely, they didn't get their heal off. It's extremely important to remember that Sheila does not automatically recharge or reload. If you holster her with five bullets and then pull her back out later in the fight, or even worse in end game, she's still going to have five bullets. You have three options. You can do a desk pop to empty out the remaining mag, place her on the ground, or an even better option is simply hitting your toggle fire button. What this does is refund whatever ammo you have back in your magazine into the ultimate charge up to 75%, unless no bullets have been shot. This is probably the safest way to ensure that you always have ammo in your magazine when you pull out Sheila. And for that option, this is the key bind that you'd be looking for. By no means is Sheila the most mobile weapon in the game. To get the most value out of her, you should be taking off angles and looking for enemies that are distracted fighting your team or other teams. Sheila kills so fast that typically if you catch an enemy off guard, they won't have time to react. And on top of that, she has a two times headshot multiplier, which is one of the highest in the game, meaning she's extremely rewarding for good accuracy. At the very least, Never hesitate to use Sheila as a backup weapon. I can promise you if the enemy is reloading their weapon, they're gonna start to hesitate and make mistakes. And who doesn't love a surprise Sheila? Sheila actually has a built-in laser pointer. And no, it's not for fun. Enemies can actually see it very easily. So anytime you're holding an angle or charging her up, make sure that you point the laser at a wall or somewhere it's getting blocked. That way enemies can't see they're aiming at them and then be ready to flick over when they go out in the open. This may seem like a really weird tip, but you actually can't pick up anything on the ground or go into death boxes when Sheila's out. I have had a few situations where this screwed me up. Over. I finished off one team with Sheila and went for a quick shield swap with the third party coming up. And if you don't put away Sheila, you won't be able to get that swap. As we know, mobile Sheila has a limited amount of ammo. However, play Sheila does not. It's unlimited. However, it does have a really slow reload time. So what you can do is get the most out of your mobile Sheila, empty the magazine, and then place it down. This will give you the full 173 on the mobile Sheila, and then you get the unlimited placed as well. This can be extremely useful in end game when you're trying to conserve ammo. On top of that, you can blow off all the doors of the buildings that enemies are holding without having to waste grenades. I wanted to mention that you can plant Sheila on the back of the trident. However, I don't recommend this as it's extremely hard to aim due to the fact that the trident never really moves steadily and it's always bumping around. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like. On top of that, I hope to see you live in stream supporting me along this 500 kill on every single legend kill grind. We'll see you later.